Hi, my name is Subon Kwan and this is Group 6 presentation on AlphaGo and Tay AI and I'll be presenting with Nidish, Mike, Nick and Benjamin. Before I go into details about AlphaGo, we need to understand what Go is. Go is a Chinese board game where a player wins when they surround more territory than their opponent using their stones. And it is the oldest board game that is currently played in the present day. Now, let's talk about AlphaGo. AlphaGo was developed by Google's DeepMind to challenge Go professionals. In 2016, AlphaGo played against 18 times world champion Li Zedou and defeated him by 4 to 1. After defeating Li Zedou, DeepMind created the newest and more advanced version of AlphaGo, which is AlphaGo Zero. On the next slide, Nidish will explain the structure and functioning behind AlphaGo and AlphaGo Zero. AlphaGo uses what is called a convolutional neural network to process information and to operate. And convolutional neural networks are neural networks based on large 2D matrices. They have reduced interaction between the layers. So we have what are alternating layers between filter and kernel for applications to create convolved layers and generalization in pooling layers. It's very powerful for image recognition, and it's one of the main things using AlphaGo. So if we look at the image on the left, we have what is a convolution, which is the kernel. Layer, and then we have max pooling, which basically is a filter. And then we have another kernel layer, and then we have another filter, which is max pooling. And this gives us a flattened output and is extremely powerful for isolating certain features or, in, or segmentation of an image. So if we have the image on the left, which is the input, we can extract certain features from it. And this is very powerful for image recognition, but it's also very powerful in data like what AlphaGo is using. In 2017, AlphaGo received its final update from the DeepMind team referred to as AlphaGo Zero. The idea with this update was to get the software to rely completely on its own training and less on outside human games or strategies that it's learned through heuristics programmed into it. This included a significant number of changes, three of which include self-play training, in which it would learn by playing against itself instead of playing, playing against or analyzing human games, uh, adding a residual convolutional network, which actually allowed an increase in the layers of the network without an increase in error, and the discarding of predefined Go features or heuristics, which were programmed into it previously, that allowed it to train with a significantly less number of data. The idea is completely board state based analysis. These actually result in a significant number of emergent patterns and an increase in efficiency of the algorithm. These play patterns actually had not been seen before by human Go players. The algorithm seems to have come up with its own original ideas about how to play the game, and some of which have been efficient enough to beat human players to the extent at which the AlphaGo algorithm, or AlphaGo Zero, is awarded a 5,000 ELO at this point. This also led to a decrease in ability to predict human play, which is interesting enough to be studied in a wide variety of cases, where AI learns completely differently from how humans do. What is Tay AI? Tay AI is an artificial intelligence program created by Microsoft in order to better understand the way that young people communicate online. Um, one unique thing about Tay AI is it was quickly to, able to develop its own personality due to an impressively powerful NLP model. However, Tay AI was quickly dismantled by Microsoft due to its lack of filter that caused radical comments and malicious intent from the Tay AI user. So what exactly is natural language processing? So natural language processing is broken up into understanding and generation. In the understanding, we encode, and in the generation, we decode. So this encoding decoding model translates from language into semantic representation, and then it goes back into language using recurrent neural networks. And this is an unsupervised learning model built with encoding and decoding networks through association found in language of Twitter interactions. So in the image on the left, we can see there's the encoder and the decoder. In the encoder, we have inputs x1, x2, x3 as words and language that is processed. And it's being encoded using RNNs, these recurrent neural networks. And then it's being decoded by more RNNs. And then we get output of generated words or phrases using, which are these y1 and y2. Artificial intelligence like Tay has left many implications on the future of experimentation. 
After less than a day in operation, Tay was taken down as a result of malicious users targeting her and causing her to learn inappropriate and explicit language. Her unsupervised model of learning led to her picking up words and expressions that were clearly misguided, and since it wasn't supervised, no one could oversee what she was learning and stop her from doing so. Now, she and other artificial intelligence like her is cited as a case study for ethical considerations in machine learning, particularly how humans interact with machines, the potential limitations we should place on them in order to prevent and avoid stuff like this happening again, and how unsupervised artificial intelligence can go horribly wrong. As said by Emma researcher and activist Caroline Sanders on Tay AI in 2016, if your bot is racist and can be taught to be racist, that's a design flaw.